Hey everyone, I hope you're doing okay. On today's video, we're going to talk about the basics of functional programming and immutability. And I thought it would be a good idea to talk about this topic before we proceed to the other data structures like uh, maps, structs, tuples, uh, lists, because we are going to do some operations on top of lists. And if you don't know the basics of how Elixir works with functional programming, then you're going to have a hard time understanding the other data types. So as I mentioned before, Elixir is functional programming. So there is no such thing as classes, inheritance, objects. We don't have uh, methods and properties uh, inside objects. No, on Elixir, we have the basic uh, data types, and then we do operations on top of those data types using functions. And then a function needs to be inside a module on Elixir. So for example, if I am dealing with strings, and I want to do an operation on top of a string, I need to access the string module. And then on IEX, you can type dot and then tab to have uh, some suggestions of the most common uh, string operations. We have like down case. Uh, I think we have uppercase as well. Yeah, upcase. And then we can call this like this. Uh, oops, upcase, I mean down case. Down, down case, okay. And the same goes for any function. We need to call the parent module like if I'm dealing with lists, I have the list uh, parent module and then a bunch of functions inside. And usually the module is defined using camel case and the function inside is using snake case. Okay, so I am going to show you a couple of differences between Elixir and Node, which is an object oriented language. If I type node on my terminal. So on the top, I'm using Elixir. And then at the bottom, I'm using node. So as an example of how this is different from a traditional OOP language, if you have a string on node, like this one, uh, a string is a primitive data type on JavaScript, but it can be treated as an object. And an object has properties and methods. So I can type a string dot and then any property. I can also do the same string dot a method like to uppercase. And then that's how I access like the functions to change uh, the string. And on Elixir, I cannot do that. If I try to do this, I'm going to type Daniel once again. If I press dot and then tab to see if there's any autocomplete, there is no autocomplete, which means that there's no like function inside the string because a string on Elixir is a primitive data type and there are no objects on a functional programming language. So we cannot access any properties or methods for a string. If you want to check, for example, the length or make it uppercase, you need to do something like this. Access the string module and then a function inside, like, I don't know. Yeah, there is the length method. I mean, sorry, the length function inside the string module. You see my my OOP, OOP brain just uh, triggered. So I can do it like this to get the length. And then the same, but instead of using the length function, I'm going to use the up. I think it's up case. Yeah. So this is the difference. You can see that here I'm using the dot and then the name of whatever I want to do after my variable. And here I am calling a module and a function to transform this data. So you might think that it is a little bit more verbose because here I just type the name of my variable dot and then whatever I want to do. And here I'm typing string dot string dot string dot or list dot list dot and then the function name, but you get used to it. Now, let's talk about immutability. 
on this example, on node here, I converted the Daniel string to uppercase, right? Let me start using variables so we can have a better example. I'm going to create a const name equals Daniel. Okay. So if I do name dot to uppercase, okay, the return of this function is the Daniel in uppercase. What do you think happened to the name variable? Well, let's check it out. We're going to type name. Okay. On this case, on this example, the to uppercase function method uh, on the name variable did not mutate the original value. You created a new value and I didn't do anything with it. Like I didn't save it on another variable. So it's like it shows on the screen and that's it. But the original value, the original name is still Daniel. So, okay, everything's fine. Now let's start working with arrays on JavaScript. Let me create an array. I'm going to add one, two, three. And then if I want to append, is it append? I think it's push. Okay. If I want to push a new item on the array, well, you're going to called the push method on the array. And then I'm going to add a new integer, which is 999. And then the return of the push function is like the the index of the the new position of the number that I just inserted. Uh, I'm actually sorry, I think it's like the number of total uh, items in the array. I might be wrong, I, I haven't used this method in a while. But okay, now if I check the array variable again, whoa, hold up. The array changed. Previously, my array was like if I go back to the history, you can see that I defined array as one, two, three. There was no 999 integer at the end. And then I called the method push. I can do it once again just to make sure I'm not going crazy. Now we have five items on the array. If I print the array on the console again, like what the hell, man? I changed the array. Yes, exactly. And this is something that the functional programming lovers, they love to brag about because on a traditional OOP language, you can never be sure if a function is directly mutating the original variable, uh, variable or creating a new one, like not changing the original uh, variable, it's confusing. And on Elixir, I don't have this problem because there's no such thing as mutability. So if I have a list on uh, Elixir, and this is a list, not an array, we're going to cover the differences between these two in another video. So I'm going to add one, two, three, in the same way I did with node. Now to append a new uh, item on the list, I can use this syntax list plus plus, and then the, an array containing the items that I want to add. So I can add nine, 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 and then, uh, I'm going to use the the nice synthetic sugar for the huge number like this. All right. Okay. So the return of this operation was a new list with these numbers and then the other ones that I just added. Okay. So let me check list again. Whoa, the list is intact. What I did here was I transformed the list into another thing, but I am never going to change the original variable. If I want to explicitly ch change the original value, you can do something like this. You can do the same operation and then rebind that variable uh, to the old one. So now if I type list, yes, I have a new list because I'm transforming the list, generating a new one, and then saving the new list 
on the old one. So now I am explicitly asking to save the new value, okay? But by default, if I don't rebind the variable, I am never going to mutate the original variable. And I think this is neat because it gives me a peace of mind that I'm not gonna accidentally mutate uh, a variable even though I didn't want it. So like this is a source of bugs in my experience. So let me show you another weird behavior that you get on a language that allows mutability. So on node, I have the array variable. I'm gonna create another one, array, array two, okay? Now watch this. I am going to say that the array two is equals to the array one, the first one that I created. Okay, now if I call array two and then array, oops, array one, we have the same values, right? What do you think is going to happen if I change the array one? If I go here, array one, then dot push, I'm gonna use a crazy number. Okay, so if I call array once again, you can see that I have the new number and now call the array two. Hold up, what the hell is going on here? I did not change the array two, I changed the array one. So this is another source of bugs on a language that allows mutability. On JavaScript, for example, you need to be aware when you're copying a variable by reference or by value. And there's no such thing in Elixir. So I, I can try to do the same example here. Like I have the list one, I'm gonna create a list two, whoops, equals list, okay. If, I mean, if I change the list one, I'm not actually gonna change it because uh, unless I rebind it. So let me try to do it in the functional programming way, like list equals, whoops, list plus plus. I'm gonna add a three, 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 three. three. Okay, now this is the new uh, value for list. If I go here on list two, we still have the old value because there's no such thing as me getting the address in memory of the other uh, variable. They are completely uh, independent. I cannot copy by reference. I can only copy like by value. So I am by creating a list two, I am copying all the values from list one and then creating a new variable. They're not bound in any way. If I change the first one or the second one, they're completely independent. And on JavaScript, do you see that here, when I created the second array, I actually copied, copied it by reference and not by value. Meaning that the array two actually has the same, it is pointing to the same address in memory as array one. So if I mutate that address in memory in array one, array two is gonna reflect that. And I don't like this. I think this is a source of bugs. And Elixir is not a pure functional programming uh, in the sense of all the functions being pure because we can have side effects like a network call, a database call, or I don't know, a file read, but it is very close to a functional, a pure functional programming a language because we don't have mutability. You can sleep well knowing that you're not gonna uh, have a weird side effect of creating a function that accidentally mutates another list that you're not aware of. This source of bug does not exist on Elixir. And that's it for this video. I like in, in the next videos, I'm gonna do a series of operations on top of lists, tuples, maps, and then I'm not gonna mutate those variables unless like I explicitly rebind the variable 
and if I do this, I'm not mutating anything. I'm just allocating a new address in memory for the new variable. So yeah, I just wanted to show that to work with strings, we have the string module, and then we call a function inside it. And that is not going to mutate the variable. And the same go for lists or any other thing. I'm not going to mutate it. I'm going to transform it, generate a new value for it. And I need to save that new value somewhere. Like I can save it on the same variable or I can save it on a new variable. So that's it. Uh, this video might be a little bit too theoretical for you, but I promise that on the next videos, it's going to click much better. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.